What's up, sisters and friends? Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you're getting a great start to your week. This is a good way to start your week because I have one of my best friends on the podcast today, and I'm so excited for you guys to get to know her more. If you've ever heard of Gracie's Milkshake Bar in Nashville or seen it on Instagram, I'm sure you had it. They are the epic milkshakes that everyone wants to go and get one one day. That is my friend, y'all, who started that. Gracie herself is in the house, and I'm so excited that she's here to talk about her life, tell her story, and I just know y'all are going to learn so much and love her so, so much. So, Gracie, thanks for being on the podcast. Of course. Thanks for having me. This is so fun. And literally last night, we were talking about all the things that you do and are a part of, and I was just like, you are the most interesting, incredible person that I know, and I'm so excited, and you don't even know it. That's the thing about you. It's like, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. It's like so casual, and I'm like, no, that's like really cool. Like, you're just like humbly amazing and so i can't wait for people to get to know you more that's really sweet i'm glad i'm here too and yeah i feel like you saying that even it's just fun because i feel the same way about you you know i feel like i've told you you before you're interesting because you're interested and so i'm like wow i love that i'm here that's cool oh man and we also this is kind of funny because i don't think that we look alike i mean you have blonde hair blue eyes i have brown hair brown eyes but when i have blonde hair People will like mistake us for each other all the time in Nashville. It was actually yeah. so weird. And it was weird too because people didn't even know we were roommates and like best friends. But people would come up to Gracie and ask her if she was me. And because Gracie's real known in the Franklin streets, oh, people yeah. would come up to me and be like, Do you know Gracie Tucker? And it was just funny. But I think it's our personality. I think it's yeah. more how we carry ourselves and how we act than more of what we look like. Definitely. And I always think it's interesting too because it doesn't matter like, didn't people think you and Lainey were sisters? Oh, yeah. Like, and people never think that me and my sister Sarah are sisters. But, it, yeah, it's totally like the personality That's how thing. how you act. Because um, <laughs> people would say that and I'd be like, like, we don't look like that much. But I was still like, yes. Like, you <laughs> I know, know like, I, oh, I, shoot, you know. I was taking the compliment. Gracie was a model at the time. I was like, okay, I look like Gracie Tucker. Yeah, I'll take it. We take it both ways. I know. It's so funny. So um, for those who don't know, we did get to be roommates in Nashville. And it was so much fun. On a yeah. level of 1 to 10, how weird were we? Well, you know, at the time, I didn't know at all. No, I didn't like, think I that I thought we either. were the most normal people ever. Yeah. But hindsight, weird in a good way. I'm going to give us like a an 8.5. 8.5 is solid. Because, like, whenever we met our landlord and he was asking us our <laughs> jobs, we're like, oh, like, we are all employed. We're solid. Sage is a speaker and a writer and an <laughs> actor. And Lainey, she does music and dancing. Sarah owns a store. And I was like, and I'm a model. And, like, hindsight, I'm like, uh. <laughs> we Those are all, all for, fake like, jobs. Like, entrepreneur. Like, we all had a lot of dreams and visions. Yes. But not much execution yet. Yeah, we were getting there. <laughs> but, like, hindsight, we were all working, doing our thing. But we had a lot of free time. We had a lot of Which was time. so fun. And, like, one thing I will always remember <laughs> is how much watermelon we ate like oh that, my god! do you remember gosh. that that was that made it us was, weird we went to sonic every day and got large ice waters with extra ice and extra lemon and yeah. we would put stevia in it weird that yeah. was laney that, that was, was laney who that started that like laney. that was laney and then we would go get watermelon from Publix, like massive watermelon we just yeah. crack it over we'd all get a spoon put some salt on it and just, just healthy girls we ate so much watermelon yeah oh my gosh what do you remember from living together because that like that and playing basketball oh so much basketball which the funny thing about basketball is so out of me sarah gracie and laney me and gracie were definitely more of like the ball players yeah um but none of us like like, we weren't that great, okay? No. Like, I did play basketball competitively. I'm a good basketball player. You are a good basketball player. Um, but all together, we were not good. So yeah. me and Lenny against you and Sarah. And it was just hilarious because despite how good we were or not good we were, yeah. we gave it everything. We were all on the floor the whole game. Yeah. Knee burns. Yeah. Like, I mean, and that's, I think, when I think about our friendship, we were just all in, like, full out all in. And yeah. I think about, um, I immediately think about, us running around the kitchen table like every yes, night we just like laps. start doing laps because yeah. of like praise or yeah. whatever happened that day and we would dance so much but i specifically remember 
one night sitting out on the balcony with y'all when we just moved into our new apartment. Yeah. And we were like eating tacos. And I remember one of us started it. And we we're like, this is the sweetest season ever. Yeah. And we all agreed. And I do remember it being marked by just like a sweetness. Like yeah. our friendship was sweet. And we'd actually all come from not having a lot of friends. Yeah. And then discovering like healthy friendship. Yeah. So that was really powerful. So talk to us a little bit about where you were at before we met. Because you were literally in high school when we met. Yeah. What did your life look like? That is crazy. Also, I remember like the first day that we met, me, you, Sarah, and Lainey went to St. Anejo. Our favorite and, restaurant. Also, yes, it's so good. <laughs> but I vividly remember like I didn't know you guys at all. And I was kind of coming in as like Sarah's little sister because I was in high school. And I remember trying to pace myself eating the guac. Like I oh, remember yeah? thinking like, chill, girl. Don't like, go too I can, strong. I can go strong <laughs> and fast. And so that's like I just remember being like, all right. Yourself. We thought you were so cool because you had those like hipster glasses on. I was hipster. You back were then. hipster. You were very hipster. I was a little bit grungy. Yeah, <laughs> grungy but hipster. Before we met, yeah, I was in high school, and then I think, like maybe I had just graduated or something, mm -hmm. and I was kind of in the in between where trying to figure out did I want to go to college or I thought about YWAM, and then I also was thinking about doing modeling because I had some people say like, oh, you might be good at that and like it, like. I got tall all of a sudden, like my junior year. Mm -hmm. um, and so I ended up going with modeling. And I think we kind of became friends. And then you went on tour, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Greece for a little bit. To model. Yeah, you to went, model. Like, yeah, you actually started getting opportunities and going for it. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, and so in that time, that was like, you met me right kind of, I would say in the zone, like right before I really became like, a woman if that makes yeah. sense like that sounds weird to say but I remember being like a kid going to Greece coming back and I was different you were so different I remember yeah. that you went from like Sarah's little sister to like oh like you're hanging with us like yeah. one of our friends and I mean going to Greece and moving there by yourself like that will really mature you were you scared when you went so I wasn't I always do this thing where I'm never really nervous it takes a lot but I should be nervous that's so true. <laughs> leading up, I was like, no, I'm not nervous. Like, my mom was crying. She's like, bye, Gracie. And it was maybe two and a half months. So not that long, but long enough when you're 18, okay? Yeah. And I was like, mom, like, it's going to be fine. Like, whatever. And then I'm like, my dad flew over there to make sure it was like legit, mm -hmm. just to be extra safe. And then whenever I actually started living there, it hit me. I was like, oh, no. Like, I live in Greece. I said, I'm nervous. Like, it all hit me at once because yeah. it was like, no nerves, just having fun. I'm going to live in Greece, whatever. And I had never been homesick before that. Mm -hmm. But then when I lived over there, I was so homesick because mm -hmm. all my roommates didn't speak English. Oh, wow. And I didn't speak Greek either, but they were <laughs> from Russia and they were so nice, so kind. But I cannot speak Russian at all. Like, <laughs> Spanish, you can kind of get it. Russian, I was like, Mm. No, you're done. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. toast. And so it was really good. And I wasn't nervous. But then when I got there, it kind of like all hit me at once in a way. Yeah. And I remember this sounds so sad, but I think everyone's been there. But I remember like kind of low point is that I cried in the shower so no one would hear me. Oh, that's like, so sad. Everyone has been sad. there. Yeah, everyone's been there. Yeah. Um, but like I came back different because honestly living there, it was a decision like because sometimes whenever you do modeling, they have like promoters for bars and stuff. And so you get to go everywhere for free. Wow. And so they would come back, hey, like, which girls want to go? Like, drinks are on us, everything. And like, something in me just said like, oh, no, I'll stay home. Like, yeah. I really think it was grace because I didn't have like the relationship with Jesus at that point in my life to where I was saying no for a reason besides like, oh, I just said no. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know why I said no. Yeah. Um, and I know you have stories like that yeah, where you're like, totally. I just said no and I didn't even know why. Yeah. Um, but that was definitely God's grace. But yeah, living That's over so there is cool. where I got to know Jesus because I had so much time. Wow. And 10 hour difference from the U.S. So, yep. you know, you're not really calling your friends on the yep. phone because it's nighttime. Yep. Um, I do think that that is like so true for so many people. Yeah. Like, I know people say like college is a time of your life where a lot of people just kind of go crazy. But I also think that can be a time of your life where you really get to seek the Lord and know yeah. Him. Because like for me, I have a similar story where when I went to Austria at 13 by myself, yeah. which you which don't have to be insane. this dramatic to, to meet yeah. the Lord. Yeah, you don't have to go to another country. <laughs> to another country. This just happened to be both of our stories. 
And I actually went to play basketball. Yeah. And when I'm over there, um, I did not know anybody. All my roommates were, which this is not as uh, dramatic as being from Russia, but they're all from the north. Yeah. And it was a lot different in the south. Totally. And uh, they had a lot different language than I did and beliefs than I did. And I remember every night we would all go to the um, party because Team USA yeah. had to be represented at these parties. So we go and whatnot, and every night I was less, just like, I don't want to do this. Like I just, mm. and it wasn't because I couldn't. It wasn't because my parents were there telling me not to. My parents yeah. were there. I was by myself, but I was just like, I, I don't want to do that. And so I would sit by the door, and that is where my relationship with Jesus started because I yeah. realized like I actually desire something better. Like I desire something mm. more f- full and more fulfilling, and. I found that in God and that was at 13. And then I think about all the things that has happened since then. And that just kind of started me out like on a good footing. And I think that sometimes it's not about going to a different country. It's about being by yourself. And it's about like making your faith your own. It's Mm -hmm. no longer your parents. It's no longer your sister. It's no longer because that's what school I go to. That's what town I'm from. It's like I'm in Greece. I can do whatever I want. But something in me is like stirring for something Better. Yeah, you kind of hit it and you're like, okay, I either believe this or I don't. Yeah. You know, you have to make a decision sometimes, yep. especially when you're alone. When I was little and went to Sunday school, I just remember they had the best ways of making the Bible come to life. And so I got to just grow up knowing so many Bible stories that, you know, we're, we're, cool and cute when I was little, but now just holds so much power in my life. Growing up reading the Bible changed my life. But uh, do you know, and this is really sad, that there are tons of people out there who still do not have access to the Bible, literally cannot get access to a Bible. Our partners at Crew are working to help fix that. And that's why I'm so excited to partner with them. They have missionaries in almost every country. Their work is leading people to Jesus, but there's something many people are missing, and that is their own Bible. Friends, uh, we can help meet that need for only $25 a month. You can provide three people with a Bible in their own language every month. Plus, when you sign up to provide three Bibles with your monthly gift at $25, Crew will give meals to 15 hungry people through their humanitarian ministry. And that is seriously showing people some love. You're feeding their soul and feeding their belly. When you sign up to provide Bibles for people in need, Crew is also going to show you some love by giving you a free copy of my devotional book, Live on Purpose. I know a lot of people have a uh, this thing called purpose anxiety, not sure what their purpose is in life. And so Live on Purpose is a daily devotional to help you really just start to live out in freedom the purpose that God has for you. Already so many of you have signed up to partner with Crew to provide Bibles all over the world, but there are still so many more people who are craving the Word of God, so we need more help. Just simply text WHOA, W-H-O-A to 71326. That's WHOA to 71326 to help today. Just imagine how much this gift can truly change someone's life. Uh, This gift of the Bible changed my life, and I know it will change so many people's life when they get access to this um, incredible life-giving Word. So text WHOA to 71326 to help now or go to give.crew.org slash woe that's give.cru.org slash woe message and data rates may apply and it's available to u.s addresses only it's so true so after you were in greece you kept modeling for a little while yeah and um you liked it but when was it that you realized like this is not really what i'm gonna do i remember specifically miami swim week yeah that was like the moment when and actually like there's a cool connection there which i'm excited to tell you because it just kind of hit me I'm like oh snap um <laughs> so yeah i modeled for like two more years on and off and it was really fun but also like the more that i got to know jesus just i don't think modeling's bad but my heart changed like mm-hmm. my highest goal went from i want to model for this company to like i want to find what god has for my life yeah and i it wasn't there before like that wasn't what i was yeah. looking for in life um, so I modeled for a couple of years and it was really fun and exciting and what I thought I wanted to do. Then I went to Miami Swim Week and we were living together. Yeah, at this I time. remember this. This was hard. Yeah, it was hard. And so I went to Swim Week and pretty much like what I was used to is going to a single casting event, couple people in a room. This was lines of hundreds of girls and you wear your swimsuit and you walk in and they give you one second of their time and they just look at you and it's like, yes, no. In, in your swimsuit. In like, your that's swimsuit. so vulnerable. And you're just like in a line of hundreds, literally, of women in their swimsuits. And you just walk in, these people dismiss you or validate you just on how you look with no clothes on. I'm like, 
that's just staying. It kind of hit me. Like in Miami, I ended up leaving swim week early because hmm. I was like, there has to be something more mm-hmm. was kind of my idea of like, is this what I want for my life? Yeah. You know, in 50 years, is this what I'm going to wish I spent my 20s on? And yeah. I didn't think that it was. Wow. Um, it's a big question to ask yourself. I actually think that's a good question yeah. to note for anyone listening. Like, in 50 years, I look back at my life, when I'm a grandma and have kids, is yeah. this what I want my 20s to be defined as? Whatever yeah. that looks like for you, whether it's in a swimsuit or it's your partying or the job, yeah, whatever it yeah. is, you know? Or even like sometimes I have a niece now and I look at her and I think like, or about your grandkids, if you want to think like whatever helps you, like would I want this for them? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and sometimes I think we do things to ourselves or say things to ourselves that we would never want somebody we love to say about themselves it's true. or do. Oh yeah, it's really um, true. Yeah, so I ended up quitting that and then I worked for Sarah, my sister, for like a year maybe. And I worked random jobs too. Like when I look back, I was kind of like Kurt on that Gilmore That is what Girls. I love about you though. <laughs> that is what I love about you. And that is something that I think everybody can learn from is yeah. like when you say like, is this really what I want to be doing? It's not that like you have to know, oh, I'm going to do this and I need to start this now. You worked at um, the cookie shop. Yeah. You worked at Sarah's store. You worked at I worked like at White's. I worked all at all kinds Franklin. of places. Yeah, and I think that's good. Like I think that that's part of the journey is yeah. like doing these things and putting tools in your toolbox that are getting you to where you're going. So it's not like after modeling you're like, oh, now I know exactly what I do with my life. It's just that modeling wasn't even going in the direction of where you were wanting to go with your life. Yeah, and so you were starting to get more more on the track. But totally. I have to ask you before we get off modeling, did that affect you as far as like your body image and like was it, is it something that made you insecure or were you just more like, you know what, to guard my heart, I don't actually want to do this? Yeah, I think it was more a guard my heart thing. But I will say like looking back, there were things that like my agents would say to me where I was like, that's not OK. Like, yeah, I didn't know in the moment, but I was already so thin and they would be like, you need to lose five pounds this week. And I'd be like, OK, I'm like, I said, OK, Dang. it's just crazy when you look back. Um at different things but a crazy thing about the swim week thing was while i was there sarah went with me um and she was like crazy just apply for some random job so i applied to happily gray do you know what that is Mm -hmm. yeah so isn't that crazy that is crazy i applied to be like some sort of assistant or something i would have been terrible at it but i still like tried something like it was the hope of having something like modeling's not it there's something else like i'm gonna find it and then now like you know this but the milkshake bar is in the same building as happily gray like that's crazy five years later and she doesn't she doesn't even know she's awesome but she has no idea that i applied at like you need to tell me in my life I That's know, I do. That's crazy. Oh, my god! I'll gosh. tell her. If she doesn't hear like this, I'll tell her. That is so cool. Yeah. So, obviously, like, now you have the milkshake bar, but to jump from modeling and working at the, uh, what was the yogurt place called with the cookies? Sweet Cece's. Sweet Cece's yeah. and whites <laughs> and uh, all these different things. Okay, so you go from that to now owning a milkshake bar, which is a crazy jump. Yeah. But the story of how you got there is actually really crazy. So talk to us about when you were in New York and kind of what happened there. Yeah, wow, okay, I'm loving talking about all this too because it's so good to look back because things always make sense Later. when you look back. You're like, yeah. oh, that's so clear. Yeah. But another modeling trip, Sarah and I were in New York and I had all these big meetings and it was whatever. Um, but they didn't go super well. And so I was super discouraged because I was like, I thought this was what I was supposed to do. I was trying a different market like New York instead of Miami. And they just were not good. Mm -hmm. But like when I look back, it's just God's grace again. Because if I would have gotten that, I wouldn't even like have the people in my life that are in my life now. Yeah. Um, but pretty much they went bad. So Sarah and I were like, let's go get milkshakes. So we go to this place called Black Tap in New York and we get milkshakes and they're cool and fun and crazy. They're just like ours, but a different menu. Um, so we get shakes and then fast forward, no thoughts there, just eating ice cream. So go back to Franklin and then Sarah and I are just walking. She's like, Gracie, what do you want to like? What do you want to do now? Because I quit modeling and I was working all these jobs, but I didn't really want to have like four jobs forever yeah yeah uh, well i thought um and i know that's kind of funny because yeah, you like, still kind of do that i know i always do that i think that's gonna be forever <laughs> um, maybe i do want four jobs at a time um but 
she was like, you should open an ice cream shop like that place that we went to in New York. Like that was cool. And you would be good at that because I've always loved like culinary arts, cooking, ice cream, like fun things. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's where the idea came from. And then, I mean, we were living together. I was like drawing milkshakes on the counter. It's crazy. And then I still remember like testing the menu, everything. And then I would give them to you and Clay. Oh, yeah. That was the best time. (laughs) Yeah. Gracie would like try all her milkshakes out on us. And we were like gladly. But I have to tell the story about the whole milkshake bar thing too because – Gracie is like the most, like I said, humbly amazing person to where she'll be doing all these things and you never know it. And so we literally live together, okay? Yeah. Which y'all y'all would say this stuff to me. Like, y'all be like, how's your day? And I'd be like, it's good. And they're like, and then y'all be like, what do you mean by good? And I was like, oh, it's like, you know, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, no, like, tell us what you did. And I'd be like, oh. And then I'd tell y'all, and I'd be like, that's amazing. Why don't you tell us? And yeah. I would just kind of like, not share everything Mm -hmm. but i got better at that because y'all helped me but you were like the same way so gracie would like draw these milkshakes but i didn't even honestly notice like i I guess i doodled too so i wasn't like thinking about the fact that you're drawing milkshakes and um i don't even know that you ever said hey look at this like or this is a passion or like i don't think you ever said that you just drew milkshakes and so then (laughs) one day and i didn't know about the like sarah saying that to you like you never shared any of that yeah. which we were really close too so I this know. is not like, like this hindsight, couldn't like, have been details, brought up Gracie. details now i ask you what you have for breakfast i know like, <laughs> you literally did this story like, yeah. what do you eat for breakfast these days but yeah we i guess we just didn't share as much and then um one day i'm cooking dinner which is kind of rare and that's why it sticks yeah. out to me and you were sitting on the countertop and you go hey by the way um i think we got that space in um what is L yeah. market and I was like, oh, great. Thinking you're talking about Sarah because yeah. Sarah, um, her sister, has a store called Imago Day. And I was like, oh, Sarah got a location. And I guess I knew Sarah was like pursuing that. Yeah. And he said, no, I did. And I said, <laughs> for what? I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you doing with the space? You're yeah. like, for the milkshake bar. You're like, have I not told you about Gracie's milkshake bar? And I'm like, <laughs> uh no never been mentioned uh, and you're like oh you know those milkshakes i draw and you go get them all and yeah. you're like showing me and it's like not just like doodles it's like very well done drawings of specific milkshakes with the menu beside it and like this is the this shake and this is the that yeah. shake and i was just like what the heck yeah and i was just like oh my gosh this is like legit so from that point on you start, um, your dad's so sweet. He built you your milkshake yeah, bar. Awesome. Like, it was like so, like, grassroots, like, so sweet. Yeah. And then you start testing milkshakes. I didn't even know, I didn't even know, like, I've ever been with you to drink a milkshake. Like, it wasn't like that was something that no, was, like, it wasn't talked the about. Norm. Yeah. And you start testing them, you just go for it. And I want to ask you because that's, like, a big thing to go for. Like, you have a, yeah. you have, like, legitimate space in a big marketplace in Nashville yeah. where you're, like, owning a full business, having milkshakes and fries. And before then, you were not doing anything like that. So how did you have, like, even the courage to start doing that? Or was it something that God, like, led you into? How did you even believe in yourself enough to do it? Because I think a lot of people listening, like, they have dreams to do these things. Yeah. But they're doing milkshakes, and they're like, well, I'm probably never going to make a milkshake bar, maybe when I'm 40 or something. Yeah. But you were how old? Like, 20... I think I was like 19. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't even know if you were 20 when you 20, started it. Yeah. And you didn't know, I mean, a whole lot about business. Like, how Nothing. did you even have the courage to start that? Yeah, well, okay, my dad was a huge help. So my dad's a businessman. He's awesome, so kind. And my parents really encouraged me and my brothers and sister. So we're very different, all three of us. You know my family. Y'all but are. My brother's like super book smart. He's literally a genius. I'm like, I do not know how he does anything. And then Sarah's just like fashionable and cool. And then we were all different. So they kind of let us be different, which was such That's a gift cool. and a treat. So they always encouraged us to do different things. But as far as that's like business side, my dad helped me and YouTube. I YouTube everything. You do. I do. So um, YouTube definitely helps with learning stuff. But I think when it comes to the courage part, and I feel like you're like this and a lot of like people who I really look up to are like this where I don't, it's not that I have some crazy belief in myself. I feel like I just believe that whatever God has for my life, he's going to bring you know into my life and it's gonna work or it's not but i'm gonna keep trying things because what do i have to lose you know what i mean like skin i think a lot of the line is like if you just tried maybe you could do it Mm -hmm. because i think i try a lot of things and and you know this and maybe we'll go into it later but i'm willing to try things because 
in a way, it's almost like I the only thing I have to lose is pride and being yeah. embarrassed. And if I just decide that I'm not embarrassed, yeah, then you're you willing can to go fail. for things. Yeah. yeah. Yo, when I wake up in the morning, uh, me and everyone in my family, we're a little bit of a slow wake up fam. Even Honey, she does not like to be rushed when she wakes up. I like to go get my makeup on and listen to something encouraging. And friends, how we start our day, it does matter. If I can start my day being centered on Jesus with a positive attitude, it makes such a difference for the rest of my day. Just putting truth into my heart. Abide is the number one Christian meditation app. They've got scripture readings, devotions, and meditations that can be as short as just two minutes. They fit right into your schedule no matter what time of the day you want to listen. They have meditations on overcoming anxiety, managing stress, finding forgiveness, and honestly, so much more. Plus, for a limited time, our listeners will get 25% off a premium subscription when you text WOE to 22433. I love taking a little uh, time out during a crazy day to refocus and abide is great for helping you draw closer to Christ and recenter your thoughts. But it's not just me, y'all. Millions of people are using abide and they have reported lower levels of stress, anxiety, depression, and better sleep at night. Because not only is the abide app a great way to start the day, it's also a great way to end the day. And I've found that this has been uh, the time where I like to use the abide app the most. They got bedtime stories. They have great ones for adults and kids. So everyone in the house can get deeper rest. Um, I remember I remember one time whenever I was feeling really anxious one night and I didn't really know what to do and I couldn't fall asleep and I literally went to the Abide app and started listen, listening to a meditation and next thing I know I woke up in the morning like I fell asleep during it and it was just so nice it put me to sleep so peacefully so get started now with 25% off a premium subscription by texting Sadie S-A-D-I-E to 22433 you'll get additional stories and meditations premium music and soothing sounds and a lot more support this show and get 25% off by texting Sadie to 22433. And I think that like a lot of the fear that stops us from doing something is pride. It's it's the fear of failure. And yeah. I think, you know, you have to know it's okay to fail. It's okay mm-hmm. to like everyone's going to fail. I mean, I look at my life and even though a lot of what I've done because of God's grace has yeah. succeeded, there's a lot of things I've done too that just haven't worked. And yeah. that didn't knock me down. That made me go, okay, where do I need to shift? Where do I need to pivot? What do I need to learn more so that that doesn't happen again so I can grow in that? And each of yeah. those moments has grown me or it's shifted my direction and where I really should be going. Like you said, yeah. those modeling things weren't going great in New York and you could have looked at that as like a failure or like, man, like I didn't do this. But instead it was like, okay, it, this is just not it then god yeah. like what do you have for me yeah. so instead of looking at something as like a oh man like i'm defeated it's like okay god if this isn't it then what's next mm-hmm. and man like you've gone in and obviously like you've had the team to help you yeah but also like, your creativity has just like been able to be on full display there like you actually did have all that you needed to do what god was calling you to do even though it didn't look like it on the surface you know yeah and so i think if god's like put something inside of you just trusting that he has put it all in you Mm -hmm. to start to do it to start doing it and that doesn't mean it's all gonna be there right here right now you're gonna grow into that for the rest of your life but if you feel the peace to go then you can go yeah. and he'll figure out the rest. It's like Moses, when God called Moses, go lead an entire generation out of slavery. And Moses is like, uh, okay, a couple problems with this. I do not know how to speak well. Yeah. I got all these things. And God's like, no, go, like, you have all that you need. Yeah. And I always think about that, like we need a lot less than we think we do mm-hmm. to say yes to God. Yeah. You really just need faith, yeah. you know? And that's what it was too. Like I, with all these situations, like, ask God. And I feel like if you're listening and you like learn to hear his voice, Mm -hmm. he says yes and no, or like try and he'll show you. Mm -hmm. Like as long as you're trying to follow God, like the path is going to lead to him. That's so true. Like, yeah, you want to be successful, but really you just want to be like with God and doing what he wants you to do. And that is success. That's so true. Because I feel like you could go after it, but you know, in your heart sometimes I feel like, like the little pool, 
Mm-hmm. If you're doing like you know, you know, it's yeah. it's hard to describe, but you really do know. You do. It's like a it's like a it's the Holy Spirit, but it's like a gut feeling inside of you that's like this is not right. And wh- when I know it's not right is when I'm trying to over explain or uh, justify or like give you all the reasons, and I'm like, yeah. why am I trying to? Like, I'm trying to convince myself mm-hmm. and I'm almost trying to convince God why this is a good thing. Yeah. But like every time, it's like whenever I push those things, it's like it's very obvious very quickly that's not it but here's the good thing about god and his grace is like even in that you're not gonna mess it up if you start Mm -hmm. stepping forward and you realize this is not right and you pivot back or repent or turn the other way like you're not gonna mess up his plan for your life like there is margin in our life to have moments of failure to have moments of mistake and to still get back up and keep going and i think like that's just such a beautiful thing but it's true gracie that you do still have four jobs and you do a lot of things and you always are diving into new things that are just so random and you genuinely do youtube so much yeah and so (laughs) tell tell us a little bit about the the things that you have going on because i think it's so funny like the other day you sent us this country song that was so good and you're like by the way i wrote it because i write country songs now like what the heck like what like what gives you that inside of you that just keeps wanting to start trying new things and tell us the new things yeah i'll tell you um side note though about like i'm glad that i'm telling you guys while i'm doing it now though you are i think i was struggling with pride in years past where I was like not telling people things till it was done because I was scared that it wouldn't happen. Yeah. And so I was like, it's better just not to tell anybody. Yeah. Then I'll surprise them and they'll be like, awesome. Yes, um, we're on the journey now. And I love the it's journey fun. because it's so cool. And it's cool to see like how God is going to like weave these things in you. Because when yeah. you're like, I'm going to write a country song and I'm like, do you know anything about country music? Yeah. And then you write the song. I'm like, dang, that's actually really good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um. So the crazy random things and they're my jobs, but I haven't made money off them yet. But you never know what's going to hey, stick. That's you right. Know, I have lots of seeds in the ground. And, like, hopefully be some flowers one day. I'll yes. look back. Um, but, yeah, writing country songs. So all these things kind of start because I have this bucket list that I wrote. And I'm like, okay, I want to try to do these because there's no guarantee that I'm going to live till I'm 80. So I'm like, okay, I want to start now. It's good. And, like, because really this sounds like, a little bit dark but you could die tomorrow i'm like why do people That's act true. like they get to live forever i'm That's like true. I, no so i made a bucket list and all of these like some of them are outrageous like i really can't do <laughs> i can't do them right now um, give us one outrageous one ah uh, okay one outrageous so one is all seven continents that's not like outrageous but it's like but it already gets hard outrageous. to get to. Yeah, it's like outrageous. <laughs> um, one that would be outrageous is that I want to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, but like not like be in it, like because I don't think that's really in the cards. But like I want to hold a balloon or something. Like, oh, you got that I think one. There's a list. You got there's gotta that. There's got to be a one. list where you sign there's up. There's got to be. That's volunteer based. That's a Google search right after this. Yeah, you're right. I'm sure there's a worse one, but I'd have to look at the list. That's good. But some of them you actually are doing now. Yes. So that led me to writing a country song. And my friend Jonathan and my brother-in-law Martin, they helped me. I was like, I told you this. It was where I told Steph. It was a car without wheels. Like my song was going nowhere. I just had pretty much a poem. But I was I was watching this Dolly Parton documentary with my mom. <laughs> and she was just writing these songs. And I'm not like that. But I was like, I could write a song. I was like, I bet I could if I figured it out. Because, um, you know, I love writing like yeah. little picture books and stuff. Yes. So it's like, it's very similar, it seems. So I've been writing country songs. We have one finished. And it's really good. It's actually like not bad. That's the thing that kills me. I'm like, it's like, no, Christian was like, this is really good. And Christian's like, he'll tell you. No, he would roast me if I needed oh, it. He would yeah, roast you. Me, yeah. He's like scary to show yourself to you. Yeah. He'd be like, Gracie. And I'd say stop. I know. Um, but yeah, it's been like every new thing I try, it's just really fun. And sometimes I'm awful and sometimes I'm good. You never um, know what's going to hit. You write great yeah. children's books, truly. Yeah. And this is one thing I love about you is like you've tried to get them published and it hasn't happened yet, but yeah. that hasn't stopped you from writing them. Yeah. And I, no, but I love that because so many people, it's like they stop whenever like the door doesn't open. Yeah. But it's like, no, don't stop because like these are actually really good. And one day the door might open and yeah. then look at like all the books you're going to have. And then you've um, 
you write TV shows that yeah. are really fun. Working and like my mom's producing shows now. So Grace yeah. has been able to share a lot of those with my mom, which have been like super fun. They're actually like legitimately working on one. Yeah. Like what the heck? It's exciting. It's fun. It's so exciting. And not to mention, she's literally like on the verge of going pro in pickleball. Okay. That's my wish. Like I wish you can write that on my forehead. I pro am pickleball. trying. I would say... That's my goal. But it's actually doable for you. Like, you're actually working really no, like, hard. No, I'm legitimately trying. And I feel like, okay, I play at the gym with a lot of people who play all the time. And I, in my head, I'm like, you want to go pro. Like, to these people, I'm like, just tell. Like, I think sometimes we don't say it out loud because it's embarrassing. Yeah. And if you say it, you think maybe, like, you'll be less disappointed if it doesn't happen. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be the same amount of disappointed if it <laughs> happens and people know or not. That's true. So, yeah, I'm not pro in pickleball, but, like, that is my goal. That I cannot wait. That I'm so glad we said this, like, on recording because yeah. one day when your country song's out and you're a pro pickleball player yeah. and all these things, like, we're going to be like, that is crazy. But the thing that I love about it is it's not wishful thinking. It's something that you work towards in all these things. Like, yeah. you legitimately have been, like, trained and pickleball you mm -hmm. legitimately have been writing songs with actual writers and musicians and like yeah. going there you have pitched your books to publishers mm -hmm. you have gotten in contact with people like my mom to pitch your shows like you're actively working yeah and um I, we talk about this a lot when people ask about the waiting seasons and i always say like you should be working in the waiting like mm -hmm. waiting does not look like it does in a waiting room for a doctor's office because yeah. if that's what it looks like for you and you're legitimately just waiting that's where you'll get frustrated yeah. That's where the anger comes, the anxiousness comes because sitting and waiting mm -hmm. and feeling out of control of like the timing of what's going to happen can just feel like really frustrating. Yeah. And that's why waiting rooms are frustrating. But waiting in the sense of like waiting for you know, the thing that you're going to do in your life or waiting yeah. for some of these big answers in your life, waiting for your husband. Yeah. It's actually not just like sitting still. Yeah. It's working with God. It's, mm -hmm. I think Sweet Cece's like in a lot of ways trained you for your work at the milkshake 100%. bar, you know, yeah. uh, writing the books have trained you to be able to write these songs. Yeah. All the practice in pickleball is going to train you for actually one day whenever, if you go pro, yeah. you're not just going to like be pro and be like, oh, I have no skill. Like you have skill skills to back it up yeah. so working in the way not sitting and I mentioned um, about waiting for your husband and you are single I and so single. shout there's out no ring. there's no ring that's yeah. the best news some yeah. of these guys listening to this podcast have heard this whole podcast um, yep check out Gracie uh, don't go to the Moche bar and uh, stalk her though because yeah, it's it, creepy. it has happened <laughs> but you're a catch like you, you really are but what I love about you is like you and I'm not saying that singleness hasn't been hard in, in some sense and that you don't yeah. desire to have a husband, but you have found like an a really cool contentment in it from yeah. from afar and as your friend that I can see. Yeah. And so talk to the people who are in the season of waiting for their husband and singleness and what have you learned from your singleness? Yeah. Um I like what you said about waiting. That's cool. I always think of waiting like this image helps me. Like, okay, if I'm waiting for my car, like to take me somewhere, like on a trip. I'm gonna have my bags packed. You know what I mean? Like I have everything I need to go on an awesome adventure. Like I'm gonna have stuff ready to go. And so that's why I think like waiting with all these like different ideas, I'm like, okay, I'm waiting. There's some things I cannot control in life, but I can have my stuff ready, you yep, know? That's good. Um, it just helps I me love think that. I'm like, okay, I'm ready I'm ready for the have trip. Your stuff. You know? Yes, that's so good because that's the thing. If you're just waiting around and you're not ready when God says go or hello, yeah. here it is. Here's they the opportunity. And then you're like uh, let me get my stuff real fast. Like, let me get all together. And you feel yeah. like rushed and chaotic. And like, then you don't feel qualified. You don't feel like confidence. But if you've been working in the way, if you've been packing your bags, yeah. you're like, oh, I'm ready to go. Book my ticket. I got my bags ready. That's such yeah. a good analogy. Yeah, it just helps me. Um, But with being single, so pretty much I've been single for my whole life, pretty much. <laughs> which has, it has never really been a thing to me where I thought like, oh, yeah, I really want to be with somebody. Um, until maybe like the past couple months and especially honestly like two weeks before you guys asked me to come do this podcast on rocking your singleness wow. I was feeling so attacked by the enemy literally just thinking like thoughts that I think everybody can have but that I hadn't had before hmm. where like just kind of like the little whisper of it and like you're never really gonna find somebody wow. or like people won't like you because you're this that or the other which is hard 
to like feel those feelings because you know that they're not true. Mm -hmm. But I think it was a really special insight of like, man, like there are people out there who feel like nobody's going to love them. Mm -hmm. And that's actually just not true. And so just to even keep pushing forward in that and like Mm -hmm. keep seeking truth and like surround yourself with people who will refresh you and like tell you the truth. Cause Mm -hmm. I got like, I call it getting funky. I'm like, I just feel like off a little Mm -hmm. bit. Um, and I, I cried telling my sister, I'm like, I feel like no one's going to like me. And then just saying it out loud, kind Mm -hmm. of like took all the weight off. Mm -hmm. She's like, Gracie, that's wrong and not true. Mm -hmm. Um, and I even think being single, that is going to be an attack that comes Mm -hmm. because if you think about it, like what is the thing that everybody wants the most in life? I think it's to be loved. And what are you as a child of God? Like at the very core, you're loved. And so the attack of no one's going to love you when you're the most loved person on the whole earth is going to come. And I think it's like almost an easy jab when you're single. You know what I mean? It's so true. Um, It's an easy jab from the enemy because what culture has like, pushed in our face is what love is is like a, just a romantic love yeah but love is so much greater than that and not only are you like loved by the god of the universe who mm-hmm. loves you beyond what you could even imagine like no height nor death nor yeah. angel nor demon nor anything past or present can separate you from the love of god it says that in romans so it's like this wild unimaginable love that god has for you but um not only are you loved by god but then also in friendship and in sisterhood and in your family like you're loved by so many and Mm -hmm. that's for everybody out there like there are so many people that love you but if you get so fixated on like a relationship love and it's like why don't have that love then don't miss like all the love that you do have in your yeah. life and i love that you said that about speaking truth because the enemy is going to lie like you're going to have those thoughts and that yeah. some singleness or just whatever you're in it's like those short jabs and it's the things that like look true you yeah. know it's not like he's sneaky like it says yeah. in genesis at three he's more crafty than any other beast in the field and he makes it look true yeah. and but it's those things that you have to say even though this looks true mm-hmm. even though this might feel true even though i don't have a ring on my finger i am single because I actually know truth and I'm rooted in truth, those things are obvious lies. And so that's why having the foundation of the truth of God's word is so impactful because it goes beyond your feelings. It goes beyond what it looks like, what it seems like, what it feels like. It stands on a solid ground of actual truth. And that's crazy because whenever um, we thought about who rocks singleness, I was like, Gracie, and so no shock that the enemy would come at you with some of those lies. But do you think that like, all the things that you're doing as far as the goals that you're setting for yourself, the bucket list has yeah. helped you stay more content in the singleness? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it has. Cause also I try to have this perspective of, okay, it's my singleness, but let's move past that. It's my life. Yes. You know what I mean? Like this is my life. I only get yes. one life. I only get this day one time. Like, do I want to be in a good mood and have fun? Or do I want to wish That's for great. something that it's not time yet? Because also, like, God has genuinely been to all of my tomorrows. Like, He has good things planned for us. And I, like, they're set out on the path of my life that I don't know where I'm going, but I know that He has good things. Yeah. I know it's going to be right on time. Yeah. Because He's never been late yet for anybody ever. Yeah. So I don't think He's going to start with me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's really helped because I'm trying to, like, just have fun where I am mm-hmm. and be where I am. Yeah. Like, just because I'm single doesn't mean my life is bad or over. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just, it's still exciting. And yeah, I'm single, but I'm not, I don't have a disease. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a bad thing to have. Yeah. Um, and I mean, honestly, if I was with somebody, I probably wouldn't have time to like, if you were with somebody, you would be writing these country songs, cranking yeah. out these, all these things. Like, yeah. it truly is such a great time of your life. I love how you yeah. said that. It's not my singleness. It's my life. Like, yeah. don't miss this huge part of your life. Yeah. And I love what you said earlier. Like, why do we all act like we're going to live till 80? Like, who said that? Yeah. Who made that promise to you? Like, yeah. this is your life. These are your days. This is yeah. what has been handed to you. And so, like, owning where you're at is just so important. I love what you said, too. Like, God has never been late for anyone ever. ever and he's yeah. not going to start with you. It's not going to happen. Yeah. He's just not. Yeah. He's so good. And gosh, that's just such a great perspective. I love that so much. I feel like uh, that little part 
of this podcast is going to stick with people. And for those listening who have been fed this lie or this, um, they've just been reminding themselves about mm. their singleness and almost feeling like it is a disease. I got to get this fixed. Yeah. Like, man, that's not a bad thing. Like rest in the season that you're in. Mm. Notice the goodness all around you with what God has for you now. Like, what is he doing in you? Who has he created you to be? That's one thing that's so mm. fun about Gracie is like she is fully and not fully, we'll always be on the journey of this, yeah. but she's fully discovering who she is. And because of that, she has found hundreds of <laughs> gifts and talents and fun things about her that make her her. And I remember just being single and like not being comfortable just like sitting with me until yeah. I got to know me. And I was like, oh, I That's like good. me. Like yeah. I like who God created me to be. And I discovered things about me. Like uh, whenever I was, um, you know, not married, I might have been dating people, but just not married. So more single in yeah, our house. The, the books that I was reading, the ways that I was studying, the things that I was yeah. like diving into, I don't have time to study like that anymore. Yeah. But like I discovered this side of me that just like loved to learn about the word, that yeah. loved to learn about God. We played so much basketball. Like it was so much fun. Yeah. We played all kinds of games and car games and hung out and danced and learned new dances. Not even TikToks, just like yeah. dances. We just make them up. Like yeah. just silly <laughs> stuff. And like those are the things that like God made you that way. And to discover mm. that in this time of your life is so awesome. And for those of you who are married, maybe a, a little bit down the road, maybe you're in your 30s and you're 40s or maybe even older like it's not too late to take the time to get to know who God created you to be and tap yeah. into all those gifts that God has make a bucket list you know make a bucket list of the wildest dreams that you have and even the smallest and don't just make it with wishful thinking actually work towards them so Gracie you have given us so much good advice by your life um, I love people like you who yes what you're saying is impactful but it's the way that you're living that has like so much impact if you stop and like listen and learn and and so I hope that Gracie's life has inspired you as much as it inspires me. And I hope you go out and have a great week starting on some of those bucket list things, throwing oh, some yeah. seeds and waiting for the flowers. Uh, but I hope you had um, a great time on the podcast, Gracie, and being your first podcast because you rocked it. Another this, thing yeah, that you this just... this was fun. I feel like we're just hanging out. We are hanging yeah. out with a couple of mics and a couple of cameras. It's yeah. just a fun hang. Yeah. Well, we love you guys and hope that you all have a great week.